Jupiter and the sign of Pisces kind of evoke something magical and fun. And I'm like, oh, they're going to be together. So, <laughs> um, so what we have going on, I will use the timeline quickly for this one. Um, as we start the year, uh, Jupiter is an Aquarius. It moved into Aquarius back in December, 2020. It's cruising along. And then you see this on your timeline, Jupiter and Pisces sneak preview. And then you keep going like, oh, okay, now it's back in Aquarius. And then when you get to the very end of the timeline, it says Jupiter and Pisces. So what that is all about is the, and here I'll take this off now that you can kind of see it, is has to do with a retrograde cycle. Jupiter actually moves pretty quickly. It's cruising along. That's why it broke free from Saturn pretty early on they were together and then suddenly <laughs> by May it has already whipped through the sign of Aquarius and it starts entering Pisces and the only thing that slows it down is a retrograde cycle that will push it back into the end of Aquarius again until December and then it officially lands in Pisces and settles there for much of the year. But a lot of the years we get, because of Jupiter's retrograde cycle, we get this special sneak preview of the sign it's going to predominantly be in next year. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. It can get you thinking um, ahead, which is what I like about astrology. A lot of times when I do readings, people are thinking, I'm just going to tell them what's coming up in the next few months or maybe a year. And they often end up with like the five year tra trajectory. So, um, because to me, that's how I can see the patterns better. I have to kind of get an idea of where it's going because otherwise what's happening in the next few months to a year doesn't make as much sense. So it's a context. And so we've got Jupiter making a brief appearance in the sign of Pisces between May 14th and July 28th. That's our sneak preview window and we're gonna see i think again some more beauty some more magic jupiter and aquarius is a lot of fun too because aquarius definitely likes to be creative and original and do new things i think it's going to create a lot of expansion for technology for example which is ruled by aquarius it's also i think a pretty good time to learn about astrology because the sign of Aquarius rules astrology and Jupiter is all about learning and knowledge. Um, <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me, with that said, Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces. Uh, before Neptune was discovered, we had Jupiter ruling Pisces and they really have to do with being part of something bigger. Uh, so Jupiter's going to function really well in the sign of Pisces. And there's a lot of faith and optimism present when Jupiter is in Pisces. It can really help us see the best in everyone and imagine the best possible outcomes. And when I thought about Jupiter in Pisces, I thought about the saying, expect miracles. <laughs> and <laughs> I wouldn't have even thought of this saying except recently. My sister mentioned uh, my Aunt Lisa, who is our special aunt in our life. And she had a sign in the back of her car that said, expect miracles, you know. And that's so Jupiter and Pisces. She also had a sign on her bathroom mirror that said, uh, good morning, this is God, and I will be handling all of your problems today. So you don't need to worry, have a great day. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's Jupiter and Pisces. Like you turn it over, whatever your spiritual orientation is, <laughs> some sort of higher authority besides yourself is going to be there to help you. You don't have to, to figure this all out, leave room for magical assistance. And in fact, invite actively invite it in. So as well as getting the spiritual support, Jupiter encourages us to expand and knowing that Pisces is the sign of artists, creatives, musicians. Um, this is really going to kick it in for artists. And so 
when you saw in that timeline, you remember there's the Neptune sextile happening during the same sneak preview. So anyone who has been working on creative projects, that's kind of exciting to know how much support you're going to have. And if even if you don't call yourself an artist or feel that you are, you might be surprised about the amount of creative inspiration that's just flowing this summer. And you might suddenly pick up <laughs> some paints or something. Um, it's a great time for it. It's very playful energy. Now, Jan Spiller has a really good uh, explanation of Jupiter and Pisces in the individual birth chart in her book, which I think can also explain the global energy of Jupiter and Pisces. And she says the conscious, which is like the highest expression of Jupiter and Pisces, is to greet the many facets of life with a basic trust in the universe. So you can experience the joy of having your vision fulfilled at every moment. And then this, this piece, I thought, oh, this is good. When you accept circumstances as they are, with your vision on the perfection behind the appearance, <laughs> you undergo joy and personal expression of being able to assist people in realizing their potential. So it's kind of a long sentence, but I was really excited because I was thinking, oh, yeah. Again, it's that Neptune, what's behind the curtain? Things are not always as they appear. Can you see the perfection behind what looks like a mess? Can you walk into a mess and envision how it's actually gonna turn into something amazing? Uh, this is this Jupiter and Pisces energy. I think the thing to look out for <clears throat> under Jupiter and Pisces, both Jupiter and Pisces have to do with idealism. If you get too much of that, there could definitely be some visions that are a little bit too big to realize all at once, getting a little bit, <laughs> taking on too much, expecting too much, um, you know, really thinking things are oh, it should be this way. Everyone should act this way. And uh, sorry, they're not doing that yet, but keep the vision, but keep your expectations <laughs> realistic. Um, and Jan calls that the unconscious expression of a planet when it's, it's kind of not as helpful. You're not using it actively. Um, so the unconscious expression that can be counterproductive under Jupiter and Pisces is according to Jan, postponing your visionary abilities to see through and beyond the limiting, insensitive, social, intellectual, and moralistic values of society. So in other words, yeah, kind of downplaying your vision and falling for the, the vision that's being presented to you. That's probably more limiting. Um, when Jupiter and Pisces is not used consciously, it can lead to a state of perpetual confusion and inadvertently allowing righteous ideas about how circumstances should be, but are not, <laughs> to alienate you from trusting life and yourself. All this can lead to a helpless stagnation. So I was thinking, okay, this is, this is good advice you know, in a person's birth chart, but it's also good advice to use the expression of Jupiter and Pisces, making sure that like what I was saying, you don't overly idealize the situation of how it should be and then kind of get your balloon burst <laughs> and then stagnate. Um, really there's, there's so much available under this astrology, we're probably gonna see, like I said, a lot of artists and musicians, not just doing their art for their own sake, but most likely for a very worthy cause, probably human rights, raising money, raising awareness. Um, and yeah, I just think some well needed joy and remembrance of some of the beauties of life and I couldn't see it right away, but that's kind of how Neptune works and how also how Pisces and energy works. 
So this Jupiter and Pisces is, can be just as elusive sometimes as the planet Neptune is. But then once I, I tuned into it, I thought, oh, okay, now I get it. Even though we've got the Saturn Uranus square pretty strong this summer, even though we're going to have Mercury retrograde in June and we're going to have some eclipses, there's, I can see this Jupiter and Pisces as offering us uh, some beauty and, and some ability to connect with other people um, in, in different ways. There, I think art is so unifying and you don't even have to speak the same language. So Jupiter being the planet that represents international relations and it is quite difficult to travel internationally right now. Um, I think there's music and art and things that people do creatively that, that just bridges all of that. It doesn't matter what language they speak or where they're living. So I'm looking forward to that, um, the power of love. <laughs> this, maybe it's the summer of love, who knows? Uh, <laughs> so that's, this is kind of a short little section, but short and sweet you know, Jupiter Pisces. And then we'll, we'll dig into more of that. Whatever goes on this summer, we get to benefit from having Jupiter and Pisces almost all of 2022. So that will also be something to look forward to. Yeah. And if you are a Pisces, Jupiter will be passing over your sun sign. That's usually good luck. Um, and if you were born with Jupiter in Pisces in your birth chart, then you're scheduled for a Jupiter return, either this summer or in 2022. Otherwise, if you have Jupiter in Aquarius, this is your year for a Jupiter return. Because as I mentioned, Jupiter is cruising all the way through the whole sign of Aquarius this year. <laughs> it's just taking that little break into Pisces this summer.